Hey, Ani here. So today we're going to be doing something different. Um, we're going to be doing a true crime segment. Uh, today's true crime we're going to be doing on the Black Widow, the real Black Widow that is. Um, this one's rough folks, so we're going to be talking about um, a lady by the name of Nanny Doss. She has quite a few names. Black Widow, uh, Giggling Granny, The Lonely Hearts uh, Killer, and Lady Bluebeard. I don't know how she got the last one, but we're gonna strap it. Falling content contains adult language descriptions of crime scenes and crimes and graphic detail. Viewer discretion is advised. So let's get into it. Nanny Doss was actually born in uh, Northwest Alabama to Louisa Holder and James Hazel. Uh, she had a rough upbringing. Uh, her father was a farmer and he expected his children to also work in the farm, which is fine, you know, but the fact that he had very strict guidelines of how he wanted things to be done and um, if the children didn't do that, they were beaten. Um, at the age of 16, Nanny decided that she wanted to get a job at a company called Linen Thread Company. Um, it was there that she would meet her first husband, Charles Brax. The two of them would go on to have four children. Charles' mother was a very abusive woman, and it has been rumored that she might have been the cause um, to drive Nanny to murder people. Well, anyways, back to Charles. Uh, he was a drunk as well as a womanizer. Uh, this caused Nanny to start acting out and start being uh, promiscuous as well. In 1927, a tragedy struck. Uh, the couple's two middle children, middle-aged children, ended up passing away due to food poisoning. It was not long after this that Charles decided that he and their oldest daughter, Melina, should leave. Um, he then filed for a divorce against Nanny because he was fearful of her and he thought that there was a chance that she could have killed the two children. Eventually, um, after their divorce, Nanny would start looking for love again. She began writing love letters to a man living in Jacksonville, Florida by the name of Frank uh, Harlson. Harlson. The two would eventually marry and it wasn't long after that they were married that Nanny found out that he was arrested at some point for assault as well as being an alcoholic. Despite the issues between the two, they were actually would remain married for 16 years. Nanny's uh, daughter, the eldest daughter, Melvina, uh, in 1943, she would give birth to a baby boy, 1945, to a baby girl. The daughter, however, would die shortly after birth because Nanny, who was watching the child at the time, decided that she wanted to take a hairpin and push it into the baby's head to kill the baby. In 1945, while Melvina was off seeing her father, uh, she left baby Robert in the care of Nanny once again, which was just a mistake. He would pass away due to asphyxia. Uh, there was no autopsy performed. It was very mysterious as to how he passed away, but nanny the bitch did it uh, so a little after that in september of 1945 frank came home celebrating the end of world war ii he decided to take it a bit too far with celebrations and he would get drunk and then eventually rape nanny well it wasn't long after that that she decided that she was going to take her first adult victim um, she took it upon herself to poison Frank's liquor with rat poison. Thinking ahead, before his murder, Nanny pulled out a life insurance on him and she ended up getting enough to move once he had already passed to Mississippi. While in Mississippi, uh, Nanny began feeling lonely again and she decided to check the newspaper's Lonely Heart column. And in that column, she decided that she would start talking to a man by the name of Arlie Lanning from Lexington, South Carolina. That was to be her next husband. The two married after just being together for three days. As it turns out, he too was a drunk and a womanizer. Um, at some point during their marriage, Nanny decided that she was going to go visit her sister, Debbie Weaver, who was bedridden at the time. June 30th, 1950, Debbie would pass away to 
due to mysterious causes, um, but we all know it was fucking Annie. September of that same year, Arlie's mother would also pass away to mysterious circumstances in her sleep. But it was after she had visited Nanny that this happened. Um, two years later, Arlie would pass away, but his death would be ruled that his heart gave out. Um, but little did the doctors know that there was arsenic and rat poison to blame for these mysterious deaths. I wonder who that could have their house was supposed to go to Arlie's sister, but instead it mysteriously burned down. It's so strange how all these mysteries keep happening around Nanny and that uh, insurance money would go to Nanny, of course. During that same year, in 1950, um, that all of this was going on, she ended up signing up for a dating agency called the Diamond Circle Club. There, she'd meet a guy named Richard Morton from Emporia, Kansas. And once again, she'd also find out that he was a drunk and a womanizer. Surprise, surprise. It's almost like she has a type. Um, a year later in 1953, Nanny's mother, Louisa, came to stay with them. And she too would pass away from mysterious causes, but this time she would complain of her stomach being in pain and cramping. But um, it didn't say what that was ruled as. Um, I don't think they actually performed an autopsy on her. In April of 1953, Richard would also pass away from mysterious stomach pains. Not long after Richard's funeral, because it worked so well, she would, um, she, Nanny, would go back to the Diamond Circle Club looking for another suitor. This time she found a man by the name of Samuel Doss. This was going to be her last husband. Uh, he was from Tulsa, Oklahoma. There was something different about Samuel though. Uh, he was a Christian and he didn't drink. However, he was a bit of a miser. Uh, the couple married in June of 1953. Um, after their, a year after their marriage, Nanny decided that she didn't want to be with him anymore and instead of you know divorcing him like a normal person would, she poisoned him with a prune cake uh, full of poison. Um, he was admitted to the hospital for stomach pains and he would stay in the hospital for 23 days. Finally, once he was released and was able to go back home, uh, Nanny decided that for welcoming him home, she would feed him a pork pot roast, of which she would also lace with poison. Um, ultimately, a few days later, uh, Samuel would pass away. Samuel's death was different than the others, though because the doctor would actually order an autopsy. The autopsy results showed that he had consumed enough arsenic poison to kill 20 men. The police would confront Nanny with the news and began grilling her about her husband's death. To their surprise, yes, she answered their questions, but while she was doing so, she would just be giggling and she was then dubbed Giggling Granny. So, at trial, she was sentenced to life in prison. Ultimately, she would only serve 10 years of that sentence before dying in 1965 at the age of 60 years old. During her crime span, Nanny would have killed 11 people from 1927 to 1954. This is truly a sad story um, that she would go so far to kill her own family members and her husbands instead of doing anything that a logical person would as you know divorcing them or um just you know maybe having an open marriage or something like that just to you know separate yourself i don't know but there's you don't have to go kill people like that that's ridiculous but i hope you guys enjoyed this segment and if you guys do enjoy it please like it comment and subscribe um we can do more of these in the future if you guys truly enjoy them i know i really enjoy uh, watching and reading true crime so um yeah thank you guys so much for watching i really appreciate it and i will see you guys in the next one bye